Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Pucker, and I'm here with another installment of the American Academy of Optometry Foundation's clinical podcast series. My name is Andrew Pucker. I'll be your host today. I'm the Senior Director of Clinical Medical Sciences at Lexitas Pharma Services. I'm also a fellow in Diplomative Academy. And today I'm joined by a fellow, uh, fellow of the American Academy of Optometry, Patrick Bulmer. Patrick, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little about your background? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So my name is Patrick Vollmer. I'm a I have a private practice about 45 minutes outside of Charlotte in uh, North Carolina, and I'm also a clinical investigator. And I was uh, very happy to be part of the Saturn One and Saturn Two clinical trials for Tarsus. Well, thanks for being here today. And actually, today we'll be discussing a Saturn II trial. As you just said, you have a lot of experience with that. Could you just give us a little bit of background first on the previous treatments that we had for demodex blepharitis and maybe why they weren't as ideal as they could have been? Yeah. So, uh, Andrew, if we think about that, there's a pro- approximately, you know, 45 million annual eye exams conducted each year. Uh, we know now that there's about 25 million patients may have demodex blepharitis, which is a really, it's a significant number. Um, However, only a small fraction, about 1.5 million, are currently being accurately diagnosed for for demodex blepharitis. So uh, what we did is in this trial, we took about um, 412 patients who had demodex blepharitis, and we assigned them in a one-to-one group for XDEMV or the uh, vehicle, which is the control group. And at the end of the study, at day 43, the study group achieved a statistically significant higher proportion of patients with cholerate cure, um, which was reduction to 10 or cholerates or fewer, uh, mite eradication, erythema cure, and a composite cure than the control group. Uh, it's important to remember that previous demodex treatment protocols prior to XDMV were not always effective nor FDA approved. So in my own clinics, I was trying artificial tears, lid wipes, warm compresses, and just a slew of other treatments but about half of those patients who have tried something discontinued treatment due to intolerance or ineffectiveness ineffectiveness of the method used. Uh, We also know that over-the-counter eye care treatments can also lead to ocular stinging, burning, uh, driving discontinuation in many patients. And then uh, recently, we also know now that there's also tea tree oil toxicity that may extend to the meibomian glands and epithelial cells and cause further damage. It's incredible to think that roughly half of our patients coming through the door have this condition, and it's great that we now have a treatment that it sounds like it works. So of uh, the patients in the study, roughly what percentage of patients responded positively to the treatment? Yeah, so about 90, over 90% of patients will respond to the therapy. And then additionally, over 90% of patients in the study also reported the drop to either be comfortable or neutral uh, after installation. So we have a patient, they come in and we want to see if they're getting better. And in this study, they looked at eye redness. Why should we care about eye redness in patients with demodex blepharitis? Well, you know, redness is really just a marker of chronic eyelid inflammation. Um, So in the study, we graded erythema on a zero to three scale. So zero is no redness, one's mild, two's moderate, three severe. Uh, The average redness uh, for all the patients at baseline was about 1.5. So that's somewhere in between mild and moderate erythema. But was what, what was really unique and exciting for me was the results of the treatment of XDMV on erythema alone. So lid redness is something that patients really notice and feel self-conscious about. I hear about it all the time. I'm sure our listeners do as well. But when you reduce erythema, patients can actually see the drug is working. They're more motivated to take it. And about one in five patients in the XDMV group experience a complete redness cure and another 50% or so or so showed at least uh, one great improvement from the baseline, which is originally 1.5 on average. So another reason to not use Visine, just get your Demodex, right? That's right, (laughs) for sure. So uh, one marker of like success is compliance with um, drops. So this study really did a deep dive on that. Could you tell us a little bit of how they measure compliance and then how, how good patients were with this drop? Yeah. So, uh, 
Patients were really uh, compliant with this drop. I mean, good, good compliance just in general suggests good comfort, you know, easy usability. Uh, subjects had a very high drop compliance. Only three patients in the whole study failed compliance and about 80 to 125 percent of patients, uh, you know, were non-compliant. That's amazing. So it sounds like we got a treatment that works and patients like it. So with that, do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners to help them implement this into patient care? Well, um, you know, my takeaway is just, you know, twice a day treatment with XDMV for about six weeks. I uh, was very safe and well tolerated and met all the primary and secondary endpoints uh, compared to control. And I'm excited to prescribe it to my patients. Awesome. Well, Thank you, Patrick, for being here today. I'd like to thank the listeners as well, and I hope to see you all again in a podcast series soon. Thanks, guys.